everybody, and welcome to another adventurous episode of Radio Rama. Where, as the name implies, I'll show you how to work on radios and other stuff. And today we have a Wilcox Gay Recordio, which is a record radio player slash record cutting machine, meaning you could either plug in something to record it, record your voice, or record the radio. It weighs a ton. It just came in last week. I do not know if it works. It looks like the needle has scraped the crap out of the paint there, so that's probably bad. So we're going to give it a whirl. I'm going to bring it up on the very act slowly. All right. Start off at zero, work it up to about 50%. Actually, it's check for current draw. Uh, let's see if it's going to continue going up. About 60 volts. Not bad as far as draw. Correct. All right, let's see if it works. Got lights. I think it works. But Jesus explains it all, and in the process, I think, gives us an answer for Job. Jesus points to the forest. Holy crap, it works. Visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. Yeah. weary in the NBA. It yeah, is a shocker, and it propels, I think, immediately and without question. All right, well, the needle, the cartridge ain't working, because it's Rochelle salt, and they all disintegrate. So, I don't know. See if I can get a record player guy in here and work on that. I'm at least going to restore the radio and the amplifier and clean up the cabinet and run an audio input through it because it probably has a pretty decent sound quality here. I haven't looked at the chassis yet. This thing is absolutely built like a tank. Look at that power transformer there. Uh, it's just single ended output. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the record player out first. That'll make it easier for me to get the amp out and it looks like I've got a joint here that needs to be re-glued. Not a problem. Just put some glue in there, put it in some clamps. So let's take all the guts out. So I've taken the record player out and I'll tell you what, this is an impressive, impressive thing. Look at that big ass speaker. And it's got decent iron. Seems like it's well constructed. The record player I've taken out, it's heavy. I guess it's got a pretty heavy duty motor because it has to can handle the drag of that cutting needle. So I'm going to take this out and then I'm going to take this out to the shop and get some wood glue and clamp it up so it can be drying while I'm working on the electronics. All right, I was able to clamp it up and glue it up and clamp it up and when it dries, no one will ever know that it broke. That's good. All right, well check this out. That chassis cleaned up unbelievably well. So I'm going to do is start overhauling it. I'm going to start with the electrolytic capacitors. There's two 10 microfarads and one 20 microfarad, 400 volts for the 10s, 25s for the 20. We have another one here. What does it say? 15, 15, 40, and 40. And the higher ones are 25 volts. Let's take a look underneath and see what we have. 100% original. Impressive. There's a lot of room to work here. There's not a ton to replace. I'm amazed by the quality of this. All right, so I'm about 60% done with the recapping job. This is fairly straightforward. There's lots of room to work. I only have one, two... Is that it, really? Two more capacitors replaced. Nope, nope, there's a third one. Okay, well, this is That's the across-the-line one. Okay, so the caps are now replaced. We have the safety cap, across-the-line cap. All that good stuff. Now we're going to clean some controls. So you see the volume pot and the tone control? We're going to like scoot a little juice in there. Like that. And twist. Twist the knobs back and forth. And then we're also going to like clean these uh, contacts here. There. I'm using Deoxit versus at home where I'm too cheap and I use WD-40. Okay, so we got it recapped. And I just realized it's almost time to go home, so I'm going to go get the cabinet, which is hopefully cured enough for me to take the clamps off. All right, welcome back to day two of working on the uh, Recordio. 
and yesterday I know it was kind of a cluster, but I got the electronics mostly done. I also fixed this corner over here that was split. You can't even tell. And now what I want to do is work on the cabinet and also add an audio input feature. I don't know who's going to want to want this thing. <laughs> and frankly, I want to get it done because I'm now overrun with projects, including a lot of this stuff. I actually just busted my lip because I went and picked up this huge stereo that's underneath these other big tabletops to give you an idea. It probably weighs 250 pounds. And I was too impatient and I almost dropped it. And when I did, I caught it and hit my face on the corner. Ugh. Probably a big swollen lip tomorrow at work. So what I'm gonna do is go over this thing with Old English. Um, it's a furniture product that they sell in the grocery store, hardware stores and whatnot. What it does is it covers up all the scratches and abrasions and all the other stuff. And uh, I'm trying to put cardboard down because I have a new driveway. I don't want to wreck, wreck it like my last one. I don't know, that's looking a lot better. It's kind of hard to see it's so bright out here, but all of the scratches and stuff are evened out. So now what I'm gonna do is add an audio input. And I know from experience that the input for the phono, the original phono, this system does not, it's, it's, it's engineered to work with the original salt crystal cartridge, which does, which does not put out the same amount of signal as the uh, Bluetooth is, or the phone or whatever you're going to plug into it. So it needs a little bit of a signal boost, and so I'm going to run it through this isolation transformer first. I'll glue that there. And the way it works is at the primary side, which is the pins that are further apart here, will go to the um, funnel input. And we're going to split the right and left channels through a pair of 33 ohm resistors. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like once I get that installed. And uh, then that sh I'll give it a test out of the cabinet and make sure it's going to be sufficiently loud. All right, so I did run it through the ISO into the phone hookup and it sounds pretty good. Not for bad for a 70 year old, 80 year old piece of equipment. So, electrically it is done. I think there's a little more uh, cosmetic stuff I'm going to do. I'm going to put it back together again. We did put a new old stock, new old stock cartridge in it. It's pretty weak. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is bring it back next week and let the record player guy take another gander at it. I haven't said that in a while. I'll take a gander at it. And uh, then we will zip it up, tie it up, and um, that will probably be it for this episode. I know it was kind of a short one. I was just looking for a diversion. I wanted something different to work on besides the myriad of radios I typically work on. It's a shame that this has an ugly form factor because it probably is going to sound really good. And I kind of like the machine age kind of appearance of it too. Okay, well this guy is done. Um, indeed, the photo cartridge is bad. That's not a big deal. One of our members, Kyle, is going to take care of that. But in the meantime, I do have Bluetooth running through it. It sounds surprisingly good. I mean, again, I had the uh, audio isolation transformer coming through. But anyway, there's that, and there's radio. Absolutely right. Trick plays are always going to be a terrible. Got a got a good tuning eye. A fake punt, fake field goal, all those things are going. We have two offensive minded. Allen some of those keys joined in on the deadline action by sending three. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Until the next time another antique electronic device comes across my workbench, I'll see you guys next time. Adios.